This is Algebra 2 with Trig. 7B.2, series and summation notation. We're going to be talking about how to find the sum of an arithmetic series, a finite arithmetic series, and also a finite geometric series. We have our two formulas written in here. Notice that when we work with these formulas to do an arithmetic finite series, we need to know the number of terms. We need to know what the first term is. And we need to know what the last term is. And if we have that information, we're ready to find out what the sum of the series is going to be. If it's a geometric series, a finite geometric series, we need to know what the first term is. We need to know n, which is the number of terms, and we need to know r, which is the ratio by which the numbers change. Notice that for geometric, you do not need to know the number of terms. And for arithmetic, you don't need to know the common difference. So there's different parts that you need, different parts you don't need, depending on which formula you're working with, depending on which... type of list of numbers that you're working with. We're taking a sequence and we're adding the numbers together. So when you add a group of numbers together, it is called a series. So we're going to come down here to our first group and our formula is S of N, which is the sum of all the terms, is your number of terms, A of 1, plus a of n divided by 2. Just like we stated above. So we need to know a few things. We need to know the number of terms. And as long as we know that we're starting with 1 in our summation notation, if we start with 1 down here, then the number of terms is always written at the top. There are 20 terms. You plug in a 1 to get the first term, you plug in a 2 and a 3, and all the way up to 20 to get the last term. There would be 20 terms. To get that first term, A of 1, we need to plug that 1 in. So it would be 3 plus 5 times 1, which is 3 plus 5, which gives us 8. The first term of this series is going to be 8. The last term in the series is when you plug in 20. So it's 3 plus 5 times 20. That's 100. 5 times 20 is 100. Plus 3 is 103. So now we're going to use our formula to find the sum. We take the number of terms times the first term plus the last term divided by 2. So our sum is going to be 20 times 111 divided by 2. Now you've got some choices. You can either take half of 111. You could take half of the 20. You could even multiply the 111 by 20 and then take half. So you, you've got some choices on what to do. But I think mathematically it's going to be easier to take half of the 20 and then multiply by 10, which is just putting a zero at the end. So 1,110 would be the total sum. For our next example, remember, we need to know the number of terms. Now, in this case, some people are going to make a mistake. They're going to jump right in and say, well, it's the top number. It's 9. You need to be observant. Notice that we're starting with 3. So you need to plug in a 3 to get your first number. Then you need to plug in a 4 to get your second number. And a 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 to get your last number. So that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. N is going to be 7. 
to get your first term, you need to plug the 3 in. So this is 72 minus 6 times 3. That's 72 minus 18. So that's going to be 54. To get the last number, that means we're going to plug in a 9. So to plug a 9 into this, we have 72 minus 6 times 9. That's 54. So 72 minus 54, they're 18 apart. So there's 18. Now we have the numbers we need. So the sum is going to be the number of terms times your first term plus your last term divided by 2. You cannot just take half of the 54 or half of the 18. You could take half of both. That would be fine. That would be 72 that you're taking half of, which is going to be 36. And 36 times 7 looks like 252. So now you go ahead and try here. Try these two equations. Work through them. They're not equations. But you're trying to find the sum of this summation notation. And then uh, pause the video, work through the problems, come back and let's see how you did. So our number of terms, since we start with 1 up to 8... Our first term is when we plug 1 in, so 3 times 1 minus 1 is 2. And our last term is when we plug in an 8, which is 24 minus 1 is 23. So since our formula is the number of terms, first term, last term, divided by 2, Our first term is 2 plus 23 divided by 2. And don't forget that you have the number of terms sitting in front of that. Number of terms is 8. So the sum of the terms is 8, 25 divided by 2. Now you've got some choices. You can either divide the 25 in half and get 12.5. That's fine. You can multiply 25 times 8 and get 100 and divide that by 2. Actually get 200 divided by 2. Or you could divide the 8 by 2. That gives us 4 times 25 and that's 100. So either way you like to do it. Here with this one, notice that the bottom number here that we're starting with is an 8. So that means we're going to plug in an 8 to start, and 9 and then a 10, and we'll work our way up until we get to 16. When we do that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we have 9 terms. So our n is going to be 9 not to be confused with n equals 8. a of 1 equals negative 11, 4 times 8, 4 plus, let's see, negative 11 plus 4 times 8, that's a little better. That's 32, so that's going to give us 21. Our last term is when we plug in a 16.
that would be 64 minus 11. That would be 53. Then we're ready to do our sum. <coughs> the number of terms, first term plus the last term divided by 2. Number of terms times 74. 2 goes into 74 uh, 37 times. And 37 times 9, 63 is 27, and 6, which is 33, so it's 333. Next, we're going to go on to a finite geometric series. It has a formula, like we stated up here, we discussed a little bit. Geometric has a different formula. It's going to use A of 1, 1 minus R to the nth power over 1 minus R. So we need to know a few things. We need to know the first term, we need to know the ratio, and we need to know the number of terms. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look for the number of terms. And since we're starting with 1, we go to 16. That means there are 16 terms. The first term, since this is in the format of a geometric formula, we know that the first term is going to be 4, and our ratio is going to be 3. So we're ready to plug it into our formula, which is 4 times 1 minus 3 to the 16th power. Now that's going to be a really big number. 1 minus 3. Now because we're working with some numbers that are probably larger than you would be able to do without a calculator, we might as well use a calculator. So we're going to use our numerator, we'll put parentheses, 1 minus 3 to the 16th power, and put parentheses around that, divided by 1 minus 3. And that gives us a beast of an answer. So this is 4 times, looks like 21,523,360. And times that by 4, and that'll give us 86,093,440. So it's just a matter of finding the parts that you need and using our formula to calculate it. So go ahead, try the U-tries, use your formula, find your number of terms, your first term and your ratio, and calculate out. When possible, don't use a calculator. When you need it, you're welcome to use it. Try to show some work. Show your values that you plug into your formula, Show a step or two using your formula, and then, of course, your answer. Pause the video, work through the two, and then come back and check it out. All right, looking here, we know our number of terms is going to be 5. Our first term is going to be 3. We know that because our formula is written in the format of a... Uh, geometric sequence. So this first term, the other way you can do it is to plug in your 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 to the 0 power is 1, 3 times 1 is 3. And then your ratio, of course, is 2. That's the number being affected by the exponent. 
So we'll come over to our formula. Remember what your formula is. A of 1, 1 minus r to the nth power, 1 minus r. The more times you write out your formula, the more you'll be familiar with it. So your first term is 3, 1 minus 2 to the 5th power, 1 minus 2. So this situation you wouldn't need a calculator for. This is 3, 1 minus 32 over negative 1. That's 3 times. Here we would get negative 31 divided by negative 1 gives us 31. And that's going to be 93. So the sum of that series, we don't even know what the numbers are, but the sum is 93. And our last example, n equals 7. Our first term is 32. Our ratio is 1 third. So our first term, 32, 1 minus your ratio to the seventh power over one minus one third. And since we're doing essentially three to the seventh power, we would need a calculator. We might as well just use a calculator. We plugged our numbers into our formula. This is gonna be 32 times. Use a parenthesis around the numerator, one minus, and I always like to put parentheses around my fraction. 1 divided by 3 to the 7th power, because that allows you to raise it to the 7th, and that is your numerator. Divided by your denominator, you've got to use a parenthesis, 1 minus 1 divided by 3, close the parenthesis for the fraction, and then close the parenthesis for the denominator, and we have 1.4993. And we times that by 32 to get 47.98. This is an approximated answer, so it's kind of fun to use the approximated symbol. On the flip side. Story problems, not a big deal. A movie theater has 24 seats in the first row, and each successive row contains one additional seat. There are 30 rows in all. So we know that the number of rows is going to be 30, that the first row has 24, now, one thing to point out, I guess, is we have to decide what type of series this is. Well, since we're adding an additional number to every row, we're adding one every time, this is arithmetic. And we're adding them together, so we'd call it a series. We know that the difference is 1. We're going to need that at different times. For our total sum, I guess down here, we're going to need to know that the last term, and we're going to have to calculate out how many are in that last row. So write a rule. To write a rule... We're going to say a of 1 equal a of n, sorry, equals a of 1 plus d n minus 1. That is the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence, which a series is a sequence that we're adding together. Our first term is 24. Our difference we noticed was. 1, because we're adding 1 to every row, n minus 1. 
So as we distribute, we're going to get n, and 24 minus 1 will give us 23. So that is the rule that we'll have. And for how many seats are there in the theater, you could write the summation notation, since you've already done most of the work, you know that there are 30 rows. The sum of this is the number of rows, a of 1 plus a of n divided by 2. So we have 30 rows. The first row has 24 seats. The last row, that's what we don't know how many are in it. Our last row is the 30th row. So by plugging in a 30, we get 53 as our number of rows, or uh, the number in the last row. This will be 30, 77 divided by 2. You can either take half of 77, you can take half of the 30, or you can multiply to the two numbers together and then take half of that. Well, I think it's going to be a little bit easier to say 15 times 77, which comes out to be 1,155. Those are seats. So in 1999, about 586,000 used cars were sold in Maryland. From 1999 to 2004, the number of used cars increased by 3.8% per year. Write a rule for the number of used cars that are sold. So since we are changing by a multiple, I'm taking this to be geometric. Okay, our first term in the geometric is 586, and those are thousands of cars. By how much it's changing by is going to be 1 plus 0 0.038, which is 1.038. That is your ratio. And the number of terms that we're going to have. Write a rule for the total number of cars in terms of years where n equals 1999, so that's 1. Then we have 2000 and 2001 and 2002 and 2003 then 2004. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. So n is going to be six. So write a rule. Let's see, what do we need for a rule? We need our, that's not s, in a rule for geometric, it is a of one times r n minus one. We know what the first term is. We know what the ratio is going to be. We're increasing by 100%, or it is 100%, plus the additional 3.8% to the n minus 1. That is our rule. So we didn't need to know the n for that particular question, but what is the total number of cars used? from 1999 to 2004. Well, we're gonna use N. No, we're not. The more times you write it, the more familiar you'll become with it. We'll use our formula. Our first term was 586, one minus 1.038, 
to the sixth power over 1 minus 1.038. And because we're taking a crazy decimal to a power, we're going to need a calculator. So once we write out our value, we will show what we have using a calculator. 1 minus 1.038 to the sixth power divided by, got to use parentheses, 1.038. All right, we haven't times this out yet. We have this crazy number to use. We want to be sure we know what we're talking about. That's not the final answer. We have to times this by 586. So we're going to approximately have 3,867. But remember, this number is in thousands. So you'd need to move over three times to see that exact value. That's a heck of a lot of cards. All right, last one. Find the sum. Well, looks like we're going up by five, going up by five, so D equals five. A of n equals A of 1 plus D and minus 1. We know our last term is 34. Our first term is negative 1. Our distance is 5. What we don't know is how many terms are there. You could distribute or you can just divide and then you can add. So there must be 8 terms. We know the first term is negative 1, and we know the last term is 34. So we're ready to calculate out. 